Aung San was the man most responsible for Burma's eventual independence in 1947 and is often cited as a modern hero and as the father of the nation in modern Myanmar. This video will discuss Aung San's role during and following the Japanese invasion of Burma, his role as a political and military leader in Japanese-occupied Burma, and finally, his eventual decision to side with the Allies near the end of World War II. Over the course of World War II, Aung San transformed from a desperate fugitive to a national leader, effectively positioning himself as the man most likely and able to secure Burmese independence in the following years. Part A, Aung San Returns. The BIA reached the Burmese border in January 1942 at the southernmost part of Burma, around the modern city of Kotong. But by the time the unit arrived in Burma, the Japanese had already captured the city. Their force grew as it advanced through Burma, taking as many recruits with it as it could along the way. By the time the BIA reached Rangoon on March 18, 1942, it was 10,000 men strong. And by May 1942, it had 23,000 soldiers. The BIA left most of the fighting to the Japanese army, but occupied the areas behind Japanese lines after the British had retreated. The arrival of BIA units in many areas of Burma was followed by escalating communal violence, especially against Karen people, which lasted for several weeks until the Japanese army was able to intervene. Throughout the war, the Burmese Independence Army would be responsible for numerous massacres and reprisal attacks on civilian areas perceived to be more loyal to the British than themselves, especially in the Irrawaddy Delta, Tessarim Division, and the Karen Hills, and especially against non-Buddhist and non-Bamar communities. Aung San recognized and was distressed by many of the early abuses of the BIA and attempted to control them by threatening punishment and reminding them that he had intended the BIA to be composed of true patriots irrespective of political creed or race. The Japanese recognition that many of the soldiers who had initially joined the BIA were undisciplined and vicious was one of the factors they cited to justify the BIA's abolishment and reorganization soon after the Japanese invasion of Burma. Later, the next year, in 1943, when many Burmese leaders had become disillusioned with the promises of the Japanese, Aung San would visit many of the Karen areas that had been attacked by the BIA, apologizing for his men, reassuring their leaders that he did not intend to attack them, and secretly agreeing with them that they would soon work together to fight against the Japanese. Early attempts by the Japanese army to prevent the Burmese from establishing a meaningfully independent government were successful. When Suzuki attempted to establish an independent BIA government following the fall of Malmyen on January 30, 1942, he was prevented from doing so by orders from the Japanese 55th Army Division. The army also refused the distribution of leaflets proclaiming the independence of Burma, even though this had been previously agreed to. On February 9, 1942, the Japanese South Area Army ordered its officers to delay independence until after the war was over. When the BIA entered Rangoon in March, 10 days after the Japanese army had taken it, they attempted to set up an independent administration at the governor's house, but were prevented from doing so by the Japanese army, who had already occupied the building and were using it as the headquarters of their military administration. The BIA did eventually form an administration for the country under Suzuki Keiji and Tan Ok that operated in parallel with the Japanese military administration for several months. But this government was soon superseded and effectively disbanded by the administration of the Japanese South Area Army in June 1942. In general, the continued changes and delays regarding Japanese policy towards Burmese independence contributed to a sense of friction between the occupying Japanese army and the Burmese. By March 1942, there were incidents of fist fighting between Burmese and Japanese soldiers. The Japanese army's actions to limit Burmese autonomy seemed to confirm the suspicions of Aung San, who had warned his comrades before the invasion of Burma began to beware Japanese duplicity and to use caution when dealing with them. He complained about being merely Suzuki Keiji's senior staff officer, rather than being in charge of his own soldiers. 
Another source of friction between the Japanese and the Burmese was the forced labor conscription, torture, and disappearances of people by the Japanese army and secret police. Aung San eventually came to suspect that the Japanese army often gave his forces marching orders, simply to keep them busy and to keep them out of the way. By the beginning of the Japanese occupation, Aung San and other Burmese leaders were already considering a resistance against the Japanese. But, as he wrote, everything was in confusion. He wrote that, under the Japanese, the Burmese people were treated like dogs. In the end, due to their general lack of training, organization, and resources, Aung San and his comrades resolved to continue working with the Japanese until a favorable alternative presented itself. There's an interesting anecdote about Aung San's attempts to resolve his problems with the Japanese army. According to this story, in March 1942, Aung San wrote a letter to Colonel Suzuki, making his position clear and requesting that his role in the force be changed. After receiving the letter, Suzuki summoned Aung San to his office. After Aung San had sat down, Suzuki angrily threw the letter on the floor, yelled, What is this? and pushed the letter towards Aung San with the point of his sword. Before Aung San could respond, Suzuki broke down and told him, Don't you know that I think of you all as my sons? If you have a problem like this, just come and talk to me about it. Don't send me any more of these letters. In response to the letter of complaint he had received from Aung San, Suzuki reformed the BIA into two divisions and placed Aung San in command. In July 1942, the BIA was reformed under the direction of the local Japanese army as the Burma Defense Army. The word independence was removed from the force's name because, according to the Japanese, the Burmese had not yet proven themselves worthy of it. Aung San was made a colonel and put in charge of the force. Suzuki eventually lost his case for Burmese independence with the Japanese army and was transferred out of Burma in July 1942, after the dissolution of the BIA. Most of the men who had joined the BIA were disbanded and sent home, and only a corps of 2,000 soldiers were attained for the BDA. Aung San completely reorganized the Burmese army's organization and chain of command when the BDA was established, ensuring that the military would be loyal to him. In order to supply the BDA, the Japanese organized a war office, which Aung San was the head of, allowing him to manage the day-to-day -day operations of the military. Once established, the office was mostly independent of Japanese involvement, eventually allowing Aung San to secretly organize the logistics of an anti-Japanese resistance. In May 1942, Aung San fell ill with malaria and was attended to by a senior staff nurse, Da Kin Ji, after which he began a romantic relationship with her and married her several months after they first met, on September 6, 1942. Their marriage was shocking to Aung San's comrades because he had always claimed that young men should avoid romantic relationships until Burmese independence was achieved, so that they could dedicate their energy towards that goal. Due to his previous rhetoric, some of his comrades were afraid that Aung San's marriage would distract him from his political goals, but this turned out not to be the case. Da Kin Ji was from a relatively well-connected Burmese Christian family who could afford the sort of education that would allow her to find the sort of job that would eventually lead her to meet Aung San. Around the same time, Da Kin Ji's sister met and married another of the 30 comrades, Tan Tun, who later became an important communist leader. On March 11, 1943, Aung San and several other senior members of the Burmese government were invited to Japan to discuss the possible future independence of Burma. While there, on March 18th, they were decorated by the Japanese Emperor Hirohito. Aung San was awarded the Order of the Rising Sun, third class with middle cords. While in Tokyo, he met Suzuki Keiji again, who explained that he had been sent back to Japan for being too friendly with the Burmese. This conversation further convinced Aung San to be suspicious of the intentions of the Japanese. Part B. Burmese independence. On August 1st, 1943, the Japanese held an independence ceremony in Rangoon, in which they formally granted Burma independence, in a manner similar to the puppet government of Manchukuo in China. The Japanese had planned to make Aung San the leader of the country, but in the end they were more impressed with Dr. Ba Ma, 
and made him the leader instead, giving him virtually dictatorial control under their direction. Aung San was made the second most powerful person in the government, as the Minister of War. The government was organized on a fascist model and intentionally eschewed democratic principles and patterns of government. The army, still under the control of Aung San, took their motto, One Blood, One Voice, One Command, at this time. It is still the official motto of the Burmese military. Aung San reorganized the administration of the Burmese National Army, placing his old friend, Lam Yang, as Ne Win's chief of staff, perhaps indicating that he did not fully trust Ne Win. By the time of Burmese independence, both the political and military leadership within Burma understood that the Japanese only intended to use them as a puppet government under their administration but resolved to continue working together in the hopes that continued unity might eventually lead to a solution to the Japanese problem. Although Aung San did not agree with the Japanese policy or administration, he concealed this in public, and the Japanese did not grow to doubt his loyalty. He took advantage of the situation to have the Japanese train the nucleus of the Burmese army. By 1945, the Japanese had trained 10 battalions of Burmese soldiers about 15,000 men. Throughout 1943 and 1944, Aung San was successful in convincing many factions within the Burmese army to delay their desired rebellion against the Japanese, assuring his subordinates that the fight against them would take place at a time when it would be most advantageous. The chief Japanese advisor to the BIA, Sawamoto Rokichiro, was so convinced of the loyalty of the Burmese that he refused to believe any suggestions to the contrary until BNA soldiers began actively shooting at the Japanese. As the war continued, Aung San became doubtful not only about Japanese promises of true independence but also of Japan's ability to win the war. As General William Slim, the commanding officer of Allied forces in the Burma campaign put it, it was not long before Aung San found that what he meant by independence had little relation to what the Japanese were prepared to give, that he had exchanged an old master for an infinitely more tyrannical new one. As one of his leading followers once said to me, if the British sucked our blood, the Japanese ground our bones. He became more and more disillusioned with the Japanese, and in early 1943 we got news from Seagram, a most gallant officer who had remained in the Karen Hills at the ultimate cost of his life, that Aung San's feelings were changing. On August 1st, 1944, he was bold enough to speak publicly with contempt of the Japanese brand of independence. And it was clear that, if they did not liquidate him, he might prove useful to us. At our first interview, Aung San began to take a rather high hand. I pointed out that he was in no intention to take the line he had. I did not need his forces, I was destroying the Japanese quite nicely without their help and could continue to do so. I would accept his help and that of his army only on the clear understanding that it implied no recognition of any provisional government. The British government had announced its intentions to grant self-government to Burma within the British Commonwealth. And we had better limit our discussion to the best method of throwing the Japanese out of the country as the next step towards self-government. On August 1st, 1944, the anniversary of Burmese independence was celebrated at Jubilee Hall in Rangoon, attended by the most important Japanese and Burmese administrators in the city. Aung San gave a speech in Burmese criticizing the Japanese administration. He criticized the idea of Burmese independence as it existed by stating that the benefits of Burmese independence only extended as far as the ministers present and could not be enjoyed by the Burmese population until the Japanese were gone. Before this speech, the Japanese had requested a translation, but Aung San refused to give one. The Burmese officials present, including Ba Ma, were shocked by Aung San speaking so openly and refused to translate the speech for the Japanese, which angered them. Though the Japanese newspaper in Yangon only reported that a speech was given by Aung San without reporting what it was, the Japanese government in Tokyo was reportedly disturbed. Aung San made plans to organize an anti-Japanese uprising in Burma, secretly forming the Anti-Fascist People's Freedom League in August and September 1944, following a secret meeting in Bago between the Burma National Army 
the Burmese Communist Party and the People's Revolutionary Party, which later reformed into the Socialist Party. Following this meeting, Aung San's forces began to secretly store supplies in preparation for their fight against the Japanese. In late March 1945, as Allied forces advanced toward Rangoon, Aung San led the BNA in a parade in front of Government House in Rangoon, after which he gave a speech ambiguously declaring that he would lead his forces to fight the enemy, without specifying exactly who that enemy was after which they were sent by the Japanese to the front. That day, March 27th, came to be commemorated as Resistance Day until the military regime renamed it Tatmada, or Armed Forces Day. The holiday became one of the most important in Burma, especially after the country's successful military coup in 1962. When he led his army west in late March 1945, Aung San was confronted by a Japanese officer who accompanied him and suspected what he was planning to do. The officer challenged Aung San by asking him what deal he had made with the British. Aung San replied that his intention was to negotiate for total independence for Burma, though at the time he thought he would need to accept independence within the British Commonwealth. At the time the BNA switched sides, Aung San was the undisputed head of the army, being the only Burmese officer promoted to the position of general by the Japanese. Part C. Fighting Against Japan After the Burmese army began their attack on the Japanese, Aung San reported to Field Marshal Slim that he was in control of approximately 7,000 men divided into seven resistance zones. Aung San was given command of the first region, comprising the areas of Prom, Hanzada, Tarawadi, and Insane. His designated political officer was Bahain, a Communist Party leader. On March 30th, the Allied commander in Southeast Asia, Lord Louis Monbatten, formally recognized the Burmese army as an Allied force. Many officers within the British army believed that Aung San should be treated as a traitor and as a war criminal for his activities working with the Japanese. But Monbatten mediated between both sides, leading them to agree to work together, that no general amnesty would be granted, and that the political future of Burma would need to be negotiated following the conclusion of the war. The Burmese National Army continued to harass the Japanese throughout the remainder of the war, later claiming to have killed 12,000 Japanese soldiers and wounded 4,000. The impact of the Burmese army is disputable, since the official British Army's history states that, although they definitely did kill many Japanese soldiers, they were not taken account of in any British military operations. Some advancing British commanders accused the BNA of not cooperating with them and of practicing banditry. When Allied forces retook Rangoon on May 3, 1945, the BNA were symbolically sent into the city two days before any other soldiers and after the Japanese had withdrawn. The Allies helped to arm Aung San's forces somewhat after their defection, supplying the BNA with 3,000 small arms. Aung San first met with General Slim on May 16, 1945, appearing unexpectedly in Slim's camp in the uniform of a Japanese Major General. At the meeting, Aung San stated his intentions to ally with the British until the Japanese had been driven out of Burma and agreed to incorporate his forces into Slim's British-led army. When Slim asked Aung San whether he had taken a risk by unexpectedly coming into his camp in the uniform of a Japanese officer and adopting a bold attitude, Aung San answered that he was not, because, he said, you were a British officer. Slim later wrote that Aung San had made a good impression in the meeting. When Slim criticized Aung San for only switching sides now that the British were winning, Aung San responded that it would not be much benefit switching sides if the British were losing. On May 25, 1945, Aung San agreed with Slim to place his forces under the overall command of the British Army in return for Slim providing his soldiers with rations and other supplies. In a meeting on May 30, 1945, the Allied leaders agreed to rename the forces under Aung San again, calling them the Local Burmese Forces. At this meeting, it was agreed that Aung San's soldiers would be treated as an allied force, with the intention to later assimilate them into the Burma-British Army after the war.
When the British Army held a victory parade in Rangoon on June 15, 1945, the LBF were prevented from fully attending due to their former cooperation with the Japanese, but were represented by a small contingent of soldiers. Aung San attended the parade as an official spectator. Although Lord Louis Mountbatten took the salute, the flag of Aung San's anti-fascist organization was flown next to the Union Jack. Thank you for watching. In the next part of this biographical series about Aung San, we will examine Aung San's transition from a military to a political leader. We will look at how he negotiated and interacted with both local and British political leaders. Growing in national and international popularity, gaining the confidence of both Bamar and many minority communities, and eventually convincing the British government to agree to peacefully grant Burmese independence.